let's go ahead and add a few more functional groups. So now we're going to talk about alkenes, alkynes, and alcohols. So first let's start off with the pi bonds, with the double bonds and the triple bonds. Alkenes and alkynes are going to be named by adding a modifier. So this is going to be the very first time that we're using a modifier in an IUPAC name. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do this. So what that means is that instead of using the ending ane, like we always use, that stands for alkane. Okay. Instead of using that ending, we're going to use, we're going to modify it to either be ene if it's an alkene or ine if it's an alkyne. Okay, so that's why we call it a modifier. It modifies the root name. Okay, so now all of a sudden, a hexane becomes a hexine if it has a triple bond in it. Does that make sense? Cool. So then, let's talk about some important rules here. Alkenes and alkynes are actually going to receive priority in numbering alkanes. This is also going to be the very first time that now when it comes to numbering the chain, we are going to give priority to this group. What that means is that I don't care about the closest substituent. All I care about now is how do I give my double bond or my triple bond the lowest number possible. Isn't that interesting? So now I'm just thinking, how can I make that number as low as possible? Okay, that's all I care about. Then finally, this can get tricky because these double bonds go over two carbons. So sometimes it can be tricky. What's the location? Is it the first carbon or the second carbon? The location is always assigned to the first double bonded carbon or triple bonded carbon. Okay? So what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and name this compound. I want you guys to go ahead and try it first with the rules, and then I'll go ahead and I'll give you the name. 